Hi, this is Paul Turner with Venify, and this is a first in a series of videos about SSH. SSH is very broadly used across a lot of very large enterprises, but it's not very broadly understood. So our goal in this series of videos is actually to provide some background of what SSH is, some of the risks that are involved, and some best practices for managing it. In this particular video, what we're going to focus on is what is SSH? So let's go ahead and dive in. Best way to understand what SSH is, is to kind of look at a server. We'll kind of do a day in a life type of scenario. We've got a server here. It's a web server. We've got a variety of different uh, folks coming into the server via uh, web page. And as they're coming in, they're going to put in a password. We want to make sure that that's secure. So what we do is we put a certificate on that server and we implement HTTPS or TLS, SSL. And what that does is it secures this connection. Now these particular users, whether they're customers, partners, employees, they're logging into that server with the access permissions assigned to their particular account, which are typically going to be somewhat limited, right? Um, it may be their bank account, may be a very important bank account, but it's limited. Their privileges are limited to that account. Now that same server, there's a group of people that are managing that server, right? It may be one person, it may be several people. Typically, the method that they're going to use to manage that server is the command line. In the past, they would use Telnet, but the challenge with Telnet, the protocol that's used to do remote command line type of operations, is that when you put your password in, it's passed in the clear across the network. So SSH was invented to secure communications between a remote system connecting up to some server somewhere to do either administration or automated operations. If we compare the permissions that these people have versus the customers, partners, employees, they have much broader permissions on the system. They're application owners managing the entire application or the entire system, or they may even have root access to that system. We're dealing with a completely different class of user. As you can imagine, if you're not properly managing SSH and securing it, now you have a much greater risk, even than you have with HTTPS and TLS. And this is what is not broadly understood in many organizations. In addition to using SSH for administration, SSH can also be used for automation. Frankly, it's very broadly used for automation. Let's say that there's an accounting department and they say, this is our accounting server and we collect statistics from the sales system at the end of each quarter and we need to automatically transfer those at midnight on the last day of the quarter so that we can process those so that they're available first thing in the morning for final processing and publishing. Well, they'll talk with one of their system administrators who says, you know what, I can help you with this. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a cron job or an automated process that will automatically wake up, collect all the files that are necessary, and then we'll use SSH and associated protocols, SCP or SFTP, for file transfer from that uh, sales system over to the accounting system. And this is great. The challenge is it's just expanded the use of SSH. And again, if organizations don't understand how SSH is being used and aren't properly securing it, it's a big risk for them. Now, one important thing to understand is how broadly is SSH used? It turns out that it's very broadly used. Frankly, just about every system allows for remote access via SSH for administration. And the rule of thumb that I actually like to use uh, and tell people is if it's not Windows or a mainframe, SSH is probably used to log into it and administer it. Now, that's not even true anymore because now even Windows has started to, to bundle uh, SSH as a core part of the, the uh, product. And the mainframe, for several years, through its Unix partition or Linux, has been able to leverage SSH for access. So now you can see how broadly SSH is used. And in this context, you can see the level of risk that organizations have because of the elevated privileges that are typically used with SSH. Going forward, what we're going to be discussing in this series is a little bit more about how SSH works and then some of the risks associated with SSH. Thanks a bunch.